Are you ready to live your dream? Motivation, inspiration, and passion. That's what it takes to make dreams come true. Welcome to the Nadia Sahari Show. Our guests will share important tips, insights, and knowledge to help you fulfill your dreams of success. Here's your host, actress, author, entrepreneur, Nadia Sahari. Welcome to the Nadia Sahari Show. I'm your host, Nadia Sahari. Let me tell you about this show. We are dreamers. We dream of writing a book, acting in a movie, getting a record label, or we dream of having our own business. This is why I invite guests to the show who will share their secrets, their journey, and their challenges. How did they do it? What are they doing now to maintain that success? My guest today is amazing. He's a singer, songwriter, and arranger. And he is in Nevada. And we're going to talk to him today and find out just how he did it all and how he's doing it, what he's doing. And he's got a lot to share. So we're going to have a great time. And I'd like to introduce to you right now, John Michael Ferrari. Welcome, John Michael Ferrari, to the Nadia Sahari Show. So glad to have you. Nadia, thank you for having me on your show. You're welcome. It's exciting. I'm glad. It's been a- well, things have gotten really busy since receiving the uh, uh, Singer Songwriter of the Year. Oh, and you did? Uh, it's a, yes. Yes, and it's been a good busy. Well, let's, really talk, good busy. About, <laughs> let's talk about your award, Singer and Songwriter of the Year. Well, you know, years ago, Pepper and I used to cover the award show in uh, Los Angeles, uh-huh. and uh, and we were there covering it uh, many years ago. And she said, you know, one year, one of these days, they're going to be giving you the singer songwriter award. Uh-huh. And I thought to myself, ah, that I can't see that ever happening because at that time, I wasn't really writing songs. And as a performer, I used to tour the country, but I. I tour with bands and we do shows, but it would be other people's songs, you know? Uh-huh. Cover songs? And then, Yeah, cover songs. And then one day I came home and I said, I'm done with touring. I don't want to perform. I don't want to sing anymore. I'm just tired of crossing the country doing these, song, these shows. And I literally quit. I mean, that was it. <laughs> and then after a couple of years, Pepper said, well, why don't you write your own songs? Why don't you because you've written songs before in the past, a few, you know, concentrate on doing your own songs. And I thought, you know, that's an idea. Mm-hmm. And at that time, we were living in Los Angeles, California. Well, if you ever, I don't know if you've ever been there, but... Yes, I lived there. Place. And I was on yes. Pepper's show, and I think I may have met you. I was on her show, yes. Actors E-Chat. Yes. Yeah. Well, you know, L.A. is a pretty uh, uh, busy place. A yes. lot of things going on. Yes. And we lived in a beautiful area, but it was busy all the time. And I, I started to write some songs. You know, I was doing okay. Well, an opportunity came up. Well, it was, a, uh, you know, Pepper's father passed away. And she said, you know, now that my father's gone, I don't want to live in L.A. anymore. So we looked for a place to live uh, everywhere. We ended up in Pahrump, Nevada. <laughs> we, bought a, we bought a little ranch. And when we bought it, it, it really needed a lot of work. Yes. And the only thing that was on a ranch was a, was a trailer, just a small little trailer. And and she, you know, we came out here, we thought, here's the possibility of fixing this up. But she would spend, you know, the next year in L.A. going back and forth. And I spent that year in this trailer with a beautiful view of the mountains. And I thought, I have a choice. I can either go crazy or I can really get into songwriting. <laughs> and I got into songwriting because it was just so, you know, quiet out here. And I could really just delve into that. Yes. And I came up with the most terrific songs and arrangements because I know how to arrange music. I built a little studio and I started pouring out these songs. And, and then after a while, you know, we started putting a show together and performing around just the uh, uh, area here, small little bars. And then all of a sudden extended to uh, Las Vegas playing with the band. And, and, and when I first got with the band, 
they said, well, nobody's going to want to come and listen to original songs you nobody's ever heard. <laughs> and I said, that's okay. That's okay if nobody wants to come and listen. And the band was patient with me. And we got out there and started performing and, and started getting a crowd. The songs started to take off. We recorded the songs. They started to get some radio play. Uh, and then one day, name, I can't even think of it right now. But, you know, they say you never know who's in the audience. Right. And he heard my songs and not only he didn't just nominate me for singer songwriter of the year, he presented it to me. He says, you've got it. You know, you you're you're the winner of I'm going to put you up as songwriter of the year. And it, it just things it began to change. Now we're on our way to Nashville in two weeks and we're doing several shows there. I'm doing several shows in New Orleans and and uh, uh a couple of other places, Memphis, all because I started doing my own songs. Isn't that something? And so what did the is. band say now? <laughs> well, they're they're shocked. Tomorrow night, uh, tonight we're playing the House of Blues. Uh-huh. You know, tonight we're performing at the House of Blues. Tomorrow night we're performing at a place called the E String. Um, you know, it, it's you know, had the Beatles never? It, they used to do cover songs, but if they'd never started writing their own songs, we would have never heard of them. That's right. And that's true with anybody, any musician, any artist. If you're doing cover songs, chances are, no matter how good you are, people aren't going to hear of you. That's but when right. you start doing your own original songs, it takes on a whole new, uh, you know, direction of what you can do with your songs. You become a real, I mean, it's like, a, I see myself as an artist now. I've never seen myself. I never considered myself a real true artist all these years because I was doing cover songs. Mm. But now that I'm doing my own songs, I really feel like I am an artist. Wow. I really can, you know, you know it's, a, it's so different. And it gives you a sense of self-respect. It makes you feel good about what you're doing. Yeah. Because no matter how good you can sing, you, you know, even if you could sound better than Whitney Houston, it's not going to be better than Whitney Houston because you're covering her songs that's already been done. That's right. Cover your own songs. That's Do your right. own stuff. Yes. And yes. and that becomes unique unto itself. Well, you, you know, know what? So you that... have you have that is great. You have Pepper J to thank because she's the one who pushed you into it. And look what's happening. It's great. Well, it does. You know, it takes a lot. You know, I'm the artist, but Pepper yes. is the one who really organizes and does everything and makes it happen. That's right. I have an idea. Yes. But she makes it happen. Yeah. That's right. Well, you wrote, you write, when you write your lyrics, you write emotional storytelling. Uh, it's kind of like an alternative country pop bubblegum, kind of a, yeah, yeah, kind of a touch of sophistication and, so, you know, kind of childlike. And it so is. you do yep. your own uh, yeah. recording, you do your own arranging. And then, of course, Pepper J is your music pr- producer. And, and she produces it, yeah. Yeah, that is super. I mean, that's well, good. It, it what a great a, team you two are. It takes that combination, uh, you know, because you, you can't do it all by yourself. No. I mean, you can't cover all the bases. No. But I can sit there and I can lay down a, a, a scratch track of me singing with the guitar, and then I start to build it. I start adding, you know, the drums, the bass, the strings, and all the other instruments that just like, oh, that sounds good. Let's do this here <laughs> and make a recording. It's uh-huh. a professional, high quality recording. Now that took years to learn how to do that. Yes. But between Pepper and I, I mean, we can kind of do do it all. That is you know? great. That is really cool. And it's unique. What you're doing is unique. So since we're talking about it, why don't we play your song and let people get a little flavor of what you've done. And your song okay. is called One Heck of a Girl. And we'll oh, be right yeah. back. Yeah, don't go away. We'll be right back. I have a, I have a story to go with that. Oh, yeah, back. don't worry. We're going to talk to you about that. Here we go. Okay. One Heck of a Girl by John Michael Ferrari. Take you to a movie I want to hold your hand I want to show you my room view Cafe Terrace 
table for two Cause you're one head of a girl Head of a girl Say you got a high IQ, razor sharp, but you play it cool. And it's easy how we get along. Beautiful, that's why you're in my song. Cause you're one head of a girl. Michael Ferrari, One Heck of a Girl. Wow, cool song. That is. I, you can hear the little bubble gum, and I could hear the story. Yeah. Today. Yeah, so let's talk about your story. How did you come up with the lyrics and the arrangement? Well, I was at Trader Joe's one day in, in Las Vegas on Sunset Boulevard. They have, a, they have a Sunset Street in Las Vegas. Yes. And, oh. um, and, and uh, I was there squeezing... Uh, the cantaloupes. Trying to, I, I could never find out what is a right cantaloupe. I never know. I just squeeze, you know, and then I pick one. And there was a guy next to me squeezing avocados. You know, he. But avocados, you can tell if they're ripe, you know. And he was next to me, and and we weren't really paying attention to each other. And all of a sudden, at the same time, we looked up, and there was this beautiful young girl on the other side, uh, squeezing tomatoes. <laughs> and and she looked up and gave us the, the, the friendliest, loving smile and kind of a wink and it nodded like, hello. And and it was just so friendly. It was just so beautiful and, and nice. And then she put the tomatoes in her cart and, and you know, just took off on her own. Mm-hmm. And the guy next to me said, boy, would I love to be the smile on her face every day. And mm-hmm. I said, yeah, she's one heck of a girl. Hmm. And I wrote two songs, Be the Smile on Your Face and One Heck of a Girl. I went home that night and I started writing both of those songs just from that little incident, you know. I've heard that happen a lot with songwriters. And I've written lyrics myself. And, of course, they're all from personal experiences. And because you have the emotion, you have the passion, you have... Uh, you can tell the story and people feel what you're saying and what you're singing and they understand, they feel it. And all my songs are, are very uplifting, positive, uh, loving songs. Uh-huh. You know, most, you know, most of the time, you know, because that's what I always feel like writing. And you're right. They are kind of like bubblegum songs, you know, <laughs> yes. um, and, but, but they're cool. simple and you can always remember the hook. Oh, Baby, it's... you're one heck of a girl, heck of a girl. <laughs> you know, you remember after the song, you know the title and you know the hook. That's right. You know, and that's the secret about songwriting. Because songwriting is really a craft. I, I understood songwriting, but I really had to get in and study it. And, you know, there are four basic formats uh, that uh, structures that you can use as a pop songwriter, pop country songwriter. And those are the ones you use. You just use them over and over again. And yes. 
and you say a thousand of songs are written that way. And if you don't follow that structure, they don't get radio play. They just don't go anywhere. You know, it doesn't mean that you you don't have a good song there. It just means that it's not a commercial viable song. They're looking for structure. They want so, a particular structure. So tell us, you know, what are those for? Well, the, the structure is basically, you know, uh, intros are down to four bars usually. Uh-huh. Your four-bar intro. Uh, you have your uh, eight-bar verse. Uh, you have a pre-chorus. It's usually a four-bar. And then you have a chorus. Yes. Which is usually uh, can be eight bars or even up to 16 bars, but it's usually eight bars. You have to get to the uh, chorus of the song within the first minute, 45 mm-hmm. seconds, mm-hmm. if possible. Mm-hmm. You know, be- and then as, at some point, you come back to the verse, chorus, there's a bridge, chorus, and you're out. You know, and basically, that's the structure of, of the songs. Now, it varies a little bit, but you have to understand structure. You have to understand mm-hmm. trying to find a way to say something in a simple, unique way, not anything complicated. Right. And you have to think childlike. You have to think, you know, you, they, they say that the, the average song is, is usually geared to a, a person with a fourth grade education, mm-hmm. the, you, know, you know, fourth to sixth grade education. Yes. You know, and, and that's what it is. It has yes. to be that simple. Yes. They say that so about if you follow, TV shows, too, and movies. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Yes. So, you know, if you're if you're really an in, intellectual person, you're going to you're going to have some problems there because <laughs> you got to think real simple. You got to think real simple, you know, That's right. That's basic. Right. What's right. the easiest? What's the hook? Yeah. So do you start your songs with uh, the chorus or, or the verse? I never know. You know, okay. when I start to write a song, I just pick up the guitar. Sometimes I sit at the piano and. You know, I, I can plunk around on it and find something. But I tell you what really, see, there's two ways to write, several ways to write a song. But for me, you can write through inspiration. Yes. Sometimes inspiration comes and you can write a song in 20 minutes. And, yes. yeah, and you know that there's a higher power yes. because that song was just a gift that came to you. Now, when that door isn't open and you're not in, connected to that higher power, you're on your own. You've got to write the song through the skills and everything that you know, and you can write a very good song that way, you know, but usually it's a combination of two. And, and, and so when I'm not inspired, I will sit there and I will put together a song through my ability of knowing how to do structure and, and how to write uh, destination writing, they call it, it's like writing a journal. And you look at it and you pick out phrases that you think would go into a song you can build a song on your own. Yeah. And so there's, that's the two ways. And the other way is you just type, uh, tap into this inspirational place and it's a gift. You know, God just gives you this gift of inspiration. He'll give you phrases and, and ideas and, and a song uh, melodies. It just comes to you. Amen. Other times you have to, other, other times you just have to work at it and yeah. use your skill. Yes, I agree. Totally. Wow. That is really cool. Well, you're on the right show because my show is about motivation, inspiration, and education, and you're hitting all of them. <laughs> it's great. Well, you know, it, it is because, you know, you you have to know that you can't write just by inspiration because when it doesn't hit you, you have to be able to write yeah. uh, from what you really know, the craft. You have to understand the craft of writing. Yes. It's like learning the craft of acting. You can act a scene and be inspired, but when those times you aren't inspired, you have to know your craft and how to make it happen. You react to life through your writing, and you write poetry, and you put your thoughts into the music, uh, and you write the music and everything. So how do you, like, how do you come to that point where you know how you want it to sound? How, how do, I do never. You, yeah, go ahead. Well, sometimes I have a pre uh, idea of what I want. Uh huh. And and sometimes that doesn't work out. You kind of have to listen to your instincts. Mm-hmm. You know, I was uh, I was putting together a, a, a bridge of a song, and I thought, you know, I, a string line would go really good here. Uh-huh. And I I hit record, and I turned to the piano because I had it on strings, and I just played the string line mm-hmm. one time through, and I thought, oh my gosh, where did that come from? And I said, that's the one. That's it. I don't have to touch it. It's done. <laughs> and, you know, it's funny how 
things like that come. You just never know. Um, other times I, I can just work it out. I say, well, it's in this key. I know I can do a descending string line here and ascending bass line here. And if you really understand your craft, you can do all kinds of things. Yes. And but you can do it even if you don't understand it, but it helps to understand how to make arrangements and make music. And that goes with anything that you do in your life. Uh, is if you know what you're doing, you have the passion for it, you understand it, you study it, you can succeed. And you can develop yourself and be successful with that. And that goes with anything. And and it's, anything, and it's about passion. It's you know, I can hear the passion in your voice. I hear it. And Well, you know, yeah, when you're inspired, I mean, like, there are times when I just try to write a song. I write some pretty good songs. But sometimes people you meet, they just inspire you. Yes. And it opens up that creativity. And, oh, my gosh, it, all this stuff flows out. And you, got, you can't even write fast enough to keep it. <laughs> but you have to write it down. You have to record all your ideas because uh, I've done this several times where I've recorded something and I thought, hmm. I don't know. It, it, it kind of inspired me for the moment, but I don't know. And then like a, a few days later or a week later, I'll play it and I go, oh, my God, that's great. <laughs> you know, why didn't I think it was great when I heard it? So sometimes when you do something, mm -hmm. it may not sound good at that moment, mm -hmm. but you have to record your ideas and then go back to it and listen to it. And you'll be surprised like, oh, my gosh, that really is good. Cool. So yeah. what tips would you give someone who wants to be a singer, songwriter, arranger like yourself? What would you advise the audience? Start start doing it. Just start, uh, you know, putting down uh, your ideas and, and see what you come up with. Eve, everybody is going to write a crappy song at some point. Don't be afraid to write crappy songs because that is the key to learning how to write better songs. And then when you write better songs, you'll write better songs than that. And then occasionally you'll write another crappy song, you know, but don't be afraid of writing uh, songs that aren't that good. Those are the stepping stones to learning how to write very well. Well, gee, thank you. I would like to ask you, would you give our listeners how they can listen to your songs, where they can buy them, wherever you are, your social media, everywhere that you may be? Where is that? Well, you can find a lot of the songs just on YouTube. If you type in my name, John Michael Ferrari, there's all kinds of songs up there. And those are early, called the early songs of, of my career. I wrote songs years, years ago. They're up there. But all the new songs and the things that are out there now are on Reverb Nation. If you go to uh, John Michael Ferrari Reverb Nation, you will see a whole list of all the new songs that we are working on. And uh, we are going to Nashville where we uh, going in a couple of weeks, we're re-recording many of the songs, although Pepper says, I don't think they'll do better than you, what you have, but we're going to re-record them. We're introducing a lot of our songs to new publicists, uh, publishers, and different people, and we're doing uh, uh, major shows. Which I'm performing with a, a national band, and we're doing several shows in Nashville, and we're going to see how just everything goes. It's really exciting. Wow. So before we go, uh, you mentioned that you do your own recording. And, you know, I do have a little recording studio. Um, and, you know, nowadays you don't need to spend a lot of money, but it does cost money to, to uh, have a little recording studio. You can do it uh, with a uh, Apple or a, um, a, any computer. But the, the the more professional and the more exotic you get with your arrangements, you're going to need a more powerful computer. Uh, Mike, I'm using a Mac, and it has like 64 gigs of RAM. It's really powerful. I mean, I can do big arrangements on there. You don't always need that, but at some point, you're going to need to invest in a good computer. I use Logic because uh, I use a lot of uh, internal sounds that Pro Tools doesn't offer right now. Although Pro Tools is a very good recording platform, uh, I prefer Logic because they have, there's a lot of uh, synth uh, instruments that come with it that you can use, like bass sounds, piano sounds, string sounds, and it comes with Logic. Now, a lot of people say, well, they're okay sounds, but they're not as good as these other sounds you can buy. What I found 
is if you make a good recording and it doesn't matter what sounds you use, the recordings are, are going to come through. Okay. And if it's a good piano, bass, guitar, I play live guitar. Mm-hmm. You know, it's great. People, I've had people in Nashville say, did you record this at a, a big production studio? And I go, no, I did it in my studio, just me and, and, and what I got. And I think that you know, I was going to ask you because, yes, uh, Logic Pro, and now they have the Logic Pro 10, I believe. And yeah. Yes, yeah. and there's a, like phew, lots of it here. There's a lot of different platforms, you, you, whatever you feel comfortable with. Yes. You know, because it all basically do the same thing. And probably I as a just, beginner, it wouldn't hurt to start with GarageBand just to get your feet wet. Anything. Because, you know, once you get started, you'll have a, an appetite to learn more and grow more and That's invest right. money into That's right. your equipment. Cool. If you want to go that way. Yes. I know uh, really talented musicians that don't want anything to do with that. They just want to play. <laughs> you know. Yes. I learned how to... Uh, I knew years ago uh, that this was the, 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 the future, and I started learning computer uh, software and everything way back in the 80s. Yeah. You know, I started using it. Wow. So I was familiar with it. That's cool. Or get with somebody who knows how to use it, you know, being a songwriter, because, you know, songwriting is about writing, and sometimes you can get really bogged down with all the technology, and it's frustrating when you're trying to learn something and you can't figure it out, and you... And, and you get frustrated and you lose all your creativity and, and you get discouraged. You know, it yes. can happen. Yes. But uh, you first, if you write your songs, you can find a way to record it really simple. Cool. And get cool. it out there. Well, thank you. Thank you, John Michael. Thank you so much. That's good advice. And I love your song, One Heck of a Girl. That is really cool. And uh, <laughs> it is. It's really cool. And... So I just am thrilled that you are on my show, and it, I know there's a lot of people out there. Their dream is to be a singer, songwriter, arranger. I know that it's, it's just, as, just as many want to do that as many want to be actors. I mean, well, those you can two also fields go, are the most popular. You can go to JohnMichaelFerrari.com. Okay. And if you have any questions, and get a hold of Pepper. There's a contact us. Okay. Uh, you know, if I can help you in any direction and give you advice or anything, please feel free to contact us. There you go. And, you know, That's wonderful. Yeah. What more do we need? That's it. <laughs> well, thank you um, so much for being on the Nadia Sahari Show. It's wonderful. And I really, really, really enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're on our way to the House of Blues right now. I know. That's <laughs> cool. To play tonight. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. have fun. When I come to Vegas, I'll come and listen. I'll sit with okay. Pepper J. <laughs> you uh, Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. I want to thank my guest, John Michael Ferrari, for being on the show. It was a thrill. It was wonderful. And when you're in Las Vegas, go to the House of Blues and watch him and listen to him sing live. And this is what's great about the Nadia Sahari Show. We have great artists, great guests that have great stories to share and to help you to get your dream. Are you living your dream? Thanks for tuning in with Nadia and her guests. For more info, episodes, and connection, please visit our website, thenadiasaharishow.com. Share episodes with your friends. Follow us on Spotify, iHeartRadio, iTunes, Instagram, and most importantly, never give up. Live your dream. Latin Connection Magazine is a family magazine featuring people of influence, cultural events, and traditions. Recipes and photos of Latin food, Hispanics in business. Plus, get news on Latin festivals, Latin entertainment, and Latinos in the fashion industry. And see photos of Latinos in action all over the U.S. Conoce tu vecino y mucho más. We invite you to share your special event with us at latinconnectionmag.com. Latin Connection Magazine. Conexión Latina y mucho más. Latin Connection Magazine. 
It's for anyone and everyone to enjoy, no matter who you are.